In this tutorial, we're going to make a quiz game that is going to test your knowledge of the first three presidents. In the process, we'll explore how a list of items can be programmed. And after you've seen this done, you can use these techniques to make your own unique quiz app. So start off at the Drake App Camp webpage, and then click on App Camp Part 3, and come to the President's Quiz section, and go ahead and download these files to your desktop like I have already here. Then click on App Inventor homepage, go ahead and click on Create, and we'll create a new project. Call it President's Quiz. Okay, from here, we have our initial screen. Um, I don't want it to say Screen 1, however, so I'm going to change that title to be President's Quiz. The other thing is that I want all these items to be centered inside the app. So I'm going to change the align horizontal to be centered. Great. The next thing I'm going to do is to get a image and drag that onto the app. Let's rename that image to be President's Image. And I want that picture to be one of the files that I just put on the desktop. So let's go ahead and upload those media files here and bring in Adams. And Jefferson. And Washington. Great. I want that picture initially to be Washington. So we'll select that. Good. The next thing I want to do is bring down a label. Let's uh, rename that label to be the question label. And change the font size to be a little bit bigger and change that text to be who was the first president. So it looks something like that. Great. The next thing I want to do is actually find this text box and we'll bring over a text box and rename that to be the answer text box. Text boxes are just a way to, that the user can type in some value into your app. Um, everything here looks pretty good. Notice there's this hint, however, and so it's going to be kind of shaded in gray when the app first appears. I'll have the hint be a type your answer here. Good. The other thing I would recommend doing is changing the width to be fill parent. So it's a nice long text box. Good deal. The next thing is I want to have a row of buttons after the text box. And so I'm going to drag out a horizontal arrangement, change the width to be fill parent. And then I'm going to go back to the user interface and drag out a button and put it inside there. Rename that button to be the answer button. And this is what the user is going to click when they have the answer implemented. So we'll say um, check answer as part of the text. The next thing I'm going to do is drag on a label inside that horizontal arrangement. Rename that label to be the answer label. And this is going to tell them whether or not the answer was correct. So we can make this a little bit bigger and change that text to be, for now, say, correct. But initially, they haven't gotten the answer correct or incorrect. I'm going to change that visible property. Instead of being shown, I want that to be hidden. That label still exists. It's still there. I can turn it on using the blocks editor. We'll see that in a little bit. One last component here. I'm going to drag out one more button. Change that button name to be the next question button. And I'll change that text to be next question. All right, great. So that's the basic look and feel for our President's Quiz app. Go ahead at this point in time and connect to your device. Okay, now let's go to the Blocks Editor. The first thing to do here is to establish several variables. It's going to keep track of our list of pictures, and our list of questions, and our list of answers for our quiz game. So I'm going to, under the variables drawer, initialize a global variable and call this picture list. 
We'll create a new list. But notice there are only two elements here as the default value for the make the list block. So let's add one more item. And so then I can populate that list with all my picture files. So Washington.jpg, let's go ahead and create another one called Adams.jpg as well as Jefferson JPG. Good. And put them into the spots in that list. Great. Just like I have a list of my picture files, I also want to have a list similar to that for my questions. So I just copied and pasted changes to questions list, and now these should be my series of questions, such as who was the first president? And who was the second president? And lastly, who was the third president? Feel free to change those questions however you might like to. And then one more list here. I have a list of questions. I also need a list of answers. So let's create a, a variable to keep track of a list of all the appropriate corresponding answers. All right, great. One last variable that we should keep track of is which question we're in the process of asking. Um, so it's going to be uh, another variable that's just going to keep track of which one of these elements should be displayed on the screen. So let's call this variable the question number and initially set that to the value of one. All right, great. The whole app really corresponds, it boils down to when the check answer button was pressed, does the answer inside the text box match the answer inside of this list? And so the, the element I need to really have a lot of code developed around is that check answer button. So let's go under the answer button and pull out the one answer button clicked block. So the first thing I want to do is again check to see if the text inside the text box matches the corresponding answer inside of that list. And so I'm going to go under the control block here and get the if statement. I want to check to see if two things are equal. So under the math drawer We'll pull out the equal sign. I want to see if the answer text box is text, which I can get to if I scroll down here a little bit. That's going to be one side of the equal sign. I also want to go into the list, this answers list, and see if the corresponding answers text box matches the correct answer. So the way to do that is to go under lists and we'll select an item from a particular list. In this case, we'll get the answers list, like so. Notice that this block needs not only the list, but what index, what element inside this answers list corresponds to the correct answer. Notice we're keeping track of that in this variable called question number. So we'll go ahead and get that question number, like so. So that'll get the appropriate answer and check to see if they got the answer correct. If so, let's set that answer label, set its text value to be something like, you know, correct. If they didn't get it correct, if that was not equal, then I want to have something more here. In fact, I want to change my if statement to also have an else section as well. So if this is not true, I want to skip this then part and execute only the else. In this case, copy that block down and say they got the answer wrong. Almost done. One other thing that I need to have happen when the answer button is clicked is, irregardless of whether it was correct or not, I need to make that answer label um, visible. So I'm going to um, make sure that answer label, and click on the answer label, and set its visibility to be equal to true. Notice that that's happening actually outside of the if statement. That's going to be happening 
that's going to be executed whenever the answer button is clicked. All right, so with that, the app should work. We'll click on the text box. We'll type in Washington. Notice I need to spell it exactly correctly with a capital W. And if I click check answer, it works.